Oh, so Carlotta is like crazy, crazy. Hello, everyone. Karen Chay with Hollywood already did it. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. Episode four of Mayfair Witch is called Curiouser and Curiouser. Uh, which is a very hard title to say, um, just because those words, I know they're words, but don't feel like they should be. Put those in the same category as the word stupider. We shouldn't be using it. But anyway, um, with the last episode, those of you who've been following along, I probably felt that was my favorite episode so far of the season. I wish they continued that trajectory, because uh, this is the episode that I have liked the least of the season. This is the episode that I spent the most time like doing other things and looking at my phone and doing a bunch of other stuff because it was the least interesting. It was the episode so far that has managed to move the story along the slowest. It felt like I was spinning my wheels. There are things that I already sort of knew that they're like, here, we're going to give you this reveal. Whereas an audience, we were already sort of aware of it and we haven't really gotten to the meat and potatoes of what the show, for me, is supposed to be about. We opened the episode with another one of those precursor flashbacks about the previous Richard, which is, and what basically all we see in this is that we see when someone in the Mayfair clan passes, when a witch uh, transitions, there's a funeral that is given for everyone, the normal folks, and then there's a funeral and a reception that sort of happens for the witches. And so a bit bigger celebration, it's a little bit more outlandish, a little bit wilder, a little bit more that they can get into their who they truly are and the true essence of it. Um, and that's also what we sort of get from that. I'm going to say this about these precursors. Because this show is so built on history and legacy, uh, and we get like throwaway lines here and there about who these people are and what they are, I would almost rather spend an entire episode or two just establishing <laughs> the history or the, the, the laying the groundwork of that. Because we don't get that, and we also don't get a lot of character moments to know who Rowan truly is. Like, at this point, four episodes in, I still don't have a lot of knowledge outside of the surface. Like, she's, she's an orphan two times. Uh, she's smart. She's educated. But I don't really have a... <sighs> why, what makes Rowan tick type of thread yet. And so if I don't know about the main character and I don't know about the legacy that has happened before, I'm kind of now at a loss as to who or what is the purpose of what I'm doing here outside of some of this stuff looks cool and I like witches. After we get our precursor, uh, Cyprian and, and, and Rowan have a little bit of Trish in a bed, but we know that this is a dream. I thought originally that this was us seeing uh, what happens when they touch, but this is just a dream that she had, uh, that Rowan had, she wakes up from. When she wakes up from, she sees that she has the key locket that, uh, that she saw Deidre have, and then Cyprian turns from Cyprian to Lasher, and she wakes up. He doesn't quite come out and say it, but it feels like Cyprian may have had a similar dream on his end, uh, and so that they may have been sharing some dreams and sharing some, some moments. But um, it is intriguing that they're just sort of dropping the seeds that, hey, maybe he has an affinity for her outside of just being her caretaker and watcher. He cares for her in a, on a romantic level as well. I don't think she sort of reciprocates that. Um, she has led, we have so far seen that her attachment to men or attachment to any type of love isn't really strong. I do love that there's a bit of humor between the two of them now. They are starting to become a, more of a, a human couple and there is a bit of humor that happens. Uh, she's, she's like, oh, poached eggs. She's like, I love poached eggs. She's like, I know I was in your head. She kind of looks weird like, wait, what? You were moping around and talking about this. He's like, I'm kidding. Who doesn't like eggs? And it just gave them a bit of a, a humanity beat. Something that I feel like a lot of the characters in this show don't have. They all are on their goal of like, I'm a witch, I'm a rich guy, I'm the evil aunt, this, this, and that. And there's no real layers of humanity in it. And that was the first time you sort of get that um, in the season as a whole. But we then see that Carlotta has lo lost the necklace. Uh, she goes into the, the basement to see where Delphine has completely smashed her face in, and the uh, the necklace is gone. Without she's freaking out and like, oh crap, where do I where do I find that? 
We then see a shot of Cortland chilling, getting ready for the funeral, because uh, this is the day of the funeral of Deidre. Um, and his kid comes in, and they, I'm using pronouns here because I'm not sure, we'll just go with they. Um, they appear to have a gift, not like Cortland, but they have appear to have a gift that they can sort of see uh, outcomes, but not really get to clear a picture of it. So Cortland's a little concerned about, hey, the person that killed Deidre is still out there. Um, and they inform uh, Cortland that, no, they'll be taken care of. It may not be by us, but somebody's going to find them and, get them and handle that business. The funeral occurs, and uh, Rowan walks in with Cyprian. Cyprian says, I'm not going to leave your side, and they walk in together. Uh, Cyprian takes a seat, and as she's going to go look at the body of Deidre, uh, everyone starts turning and looking at her. They all know who she is. Uh, she does not know who any of them are. She knows who they are. I mean, she knows, they know who she is. And um, some of it because of her eyes. We mentioned at the very beginning of the first episode that Deidre in the chair had the, 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 uh, the Alexander Daddario blue eyes, piercing blue eyes, that so does Rowan. So they put that as a character beat for both. Um, and so that they're like, oh yeah, that, that must be her, that must be her. And everybody starts turning around. And then Carlotta finds her and sort of starts sticking her teeth in. Portland sort of stands to the side and lets Carlotta be Carlotta. <laughs> um, she's being super extra. She's been super leaning it on. She's saying, I love you and like, blah, blah, blah. You're part of the family. You're Mayfair. All, all of this stuff. Uh, she's laying it on thick. Some of it is because we've seen that Carlotta is very calculating. She wants to get what she wants. She wants it then. And if you don't follow her rules, she's kind of going to toss you aside, which as we get later in this episode, she does to Rowan. Um, they they make a call for all immediate family to come to the casket to look at Deidre for one last time. Uh, they all do, Cortland, all of those folks do. And then uh, uh, a gust of wind opens the door and rose petals start flying all through the uh, through the church. Um, and at that point, sort of a distraction, Carlotta then starts searching Deidre's dead carcass for the pendant that she originally had. Um, and that was originally on Delphine. Nothing there. She didn't find it. So as they leave to exit and go to the location where they're going to put the body into the ground, uh, Cyprian gets a call from his bosses, and they're like, hey, I think we have a lead. We may have found the person that exited that elevator. You can come. We, wanna, we want you to be a part of this and to interrogate him. He asks if Rowan's going to be okay. If not, it's like we'll drop you off at home right now. She's like, no, I want to stick around. I want to hang out here, uh, which is a bit naive. I feel like Rowan consistently puts herself in places of danger, though others has though she's been proven, though it has been proven not to, and though others have told her not to, Cyprian she can trust, she continues to do things outside of, of that realm. Um, and I know it's a part of like, hey, this is calling to her or for legacy, but there's nothing character-wise that we have really learned that will make her feel like she's just so inept at making a correct decision. Um, rash, maybe, but there's logic, and especially being a doctor, I feel like there's a bit more logic to what Rowan chooses. But anyway, she stays behind, hangs out with them. It's there that uh, Carlotta invites her to a reception at the house. Um, she says, You need to come out to the house and, and sort of meet folks, meet other family members. Uh, it would be good to have you around. And Rowan at that point is like, uh, I don't know. It's important to note that there's a shot a throwaway shot they sort of have of someone taking photos of these witches in the in the shadows i think it's a group that originally when uh cyprian went to go do the autopsy when he gave them that full flyer and said hey we have a group in this society who and by which um i think that's where those photos were coming from and i feel like at this point i sort of felt like there's a chance that um this crew has been put into effect by, I, th I thought by Lasher, uh, but, but it's been put into effect to sort of draw the witches out to get sort of put Rowan and everybody else into plain sight. I don't know about that. Uh, I'm sort of getting the answer about the Lasher aspect of it, but I feel like that photographer is with that crew. Here's where this episode really starts going downhill for me. We have in one scene, Rowan's like, uh, I'm not sure if I want to go to the reception. 
And in the very next scene, going at the reception. There was no challenge. There was no onus. There's nothing in the brain that says, cool, maybe I should go to this. Just just going. Uh, and I feel like this episode does things where it's like, we're just, we're just, going, we're just riding the motions. We're just going through the motions because this is what we're supposed to do, as opposed to giving any type of reasoning as to why we're doing things. Um, while at the house, uh, Rowan is in a room with Carlotta again. Carlotta brings her photos to basically show her that her adoptive mother was a Mayfair as well. That's not a reveal to the audience. It's a reveal to Rowan. And I don't particularly know why we waited to the fourth episode to give her that reveal. But what's crazier about it, Rowan's response to it is not nearly as shocked as I think it should have been. Just more of a throwaway question, like, oh, my mother was a way she was a Mayfair? And she's like, yeah. A lot of them says, hey, she did what she was supposed to do. I told her to hide you. And Rowan's like, you're the one who put me away? And she's like, yep, I did. Um, and I, she starts patting herself on the back, like, if I didn't, you wouldn't be a doctor. Uh, but she also says, like, the Deidre was also in on her being separated. So while it hurt her, while she wanted you to be around, she thought that would be what's best for you is to not be around us. Um, and in that, she's sort of leading towards the, hey, for safety purposes, you are better not being here. And Rowan sort of puts in, like, because of him, Lasher. Which lets Carlotta know that Lasher has been present to her uh, and has made himself known to her. And she's like, yeah, that's part of it. He's a dangerous man, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So at that point, Uncle Cortland comes in and he starts waving his bravado around. He's been super Southern uncle. And more of his side of the family crashed the reception. And they started introducing themselves to, to Rowan, uh, let her know of, some people are fans of her. Like there's a Tess who's a super diehard fan of her and knows of her, like has studied her. Um, they are more aware of her than obviously she is of them. That's a bit uncomfortable for her. Then she's let to know that she is what they call a designee. Um, and the will has designated this this home and inheritance to her. Uh, and uh, she has shown the wall of previous witches and that she is known to be the 13th one um, and that Deidre does not have a photo up there because Carlotta cho chose not to. Um, the 12 photos are all up there on the wall. I, I feel like, again, this is another historic dump to us that we just don't have any context for. I don't know outside of the one that they keep showing us at the very beginning in Deidre's. They're just putting bodies up there or photos up there that don't mean anything other than the fact that they all have a key locket. It is put upon Rowan that, hey, this is how the legacy goes. Each woman passes it on to their daughter and you will. So to your daughter as well, Rowan's like, well, if they used to say so, I don't plan on having any kids. I'm selfish and I don't want to do none of that. This is that point that Rowan notices that they're all having a neck. They all have the keychain necklace uh, that no one seems to know where it's at. Beatrice is gone and she doesn't have it. So... That needs to be located. Cyprian goes to interrogate the man that uh, is believed to have slit Deidre's throat. And he's spazzing out. He's having his, these contortions and whatnot. Cyprian goes to touch him and he sees that this is the guy that killed her. Um, he then reports and is kind of like, yeah, this is the guy that killed him, but I don't know if he did it on his own accord. I'm not entirely sure what the end goal was. I don't know if he was possessed or not. Then the man's body contorts even more and basically commits, it, it dies. He snaps his own neck. Cyprian goes to go touch him and see what's going on with that, see what his last, like, what his last thoughts were. And then we see the visage of Lasher leaving his body, uh, which I feel would be more of a reveal if it wasn't so clear to me that that kind of where this went. I don't, again, like I said in a couple episodes ago, I don't think Lasher can have both Deidre the mother and go after uh, Rowan the way that he wants if she was still around. And he's using her sort of as a carrot to weaken Rowan's sort of senses and get her to be more on board to come onto his side. Um, so that wasn't a big reveal. I think they thought that was going to be a bigger, oh my God, it's Lasher in there. But I kind of saw that. Um, and I don't know if that's in the books, if that sticks to what actually took place, but that's not news. The funny thing is directly after 
he gives them their information. The Ptolemaeus is like, cool, Cyprian, you can go ahead and bounce. Uh, we got it from here. And it is clear that they are hiding something, but they also don't want Cyprian to know more because he is so involved with Rowan. They don't want any information. I feel like they don't want any information that he, that they may have going to her unwillingly or unknowingly. Because he's like, you're getting kind of close to this. Is there a romantic thing happening? And Cyprian's like, nah, none of that. I just, I was put in charge of her. And I feel like, yeah, there is. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily uh, all involuntary. I feel like once you touch, you, you kind of get, once you go into the brain of Rowan, you sort of get a little bit more intense and involved, but he is more than what he says. Um, and so the Tyler Mask are kind of like, nah, you go ahead and get out of here and go do what you got to do, but we got it from here. At that point, the Cyprian tries to text Rowan and be like, hey, where are you at? You made it back to the, the apartment and everything? And Rowan just starts ignoring his text. Again, something that doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. Uh, it is a character flaw that I can't figure out because she actually likes Cyprian and feels at, in touch with Cyprian. So for her to just be like, I, I get it in the fact that it's saying, hey, this world in this home is starting to engulf her so much that she can't make rational decisions. We just haven't seen enough of that to justify getting there already. After she ignores his text, she sees Cortland kind of scurrying away outside. Basically, Cortland's way of saying, hey, come talk to me out away from all these other witches. Um, and it's at that point that Cortland says, I know Lasha, and he's not as bad as Carlotta is planning out or saying out to be. He says you shouldn't be frightened of him and that he knows things about your mother. He was at one with your mother. He knows things about your mother that you may want to ask him about. You should let him in, basically. It's his way of saying um, to that point that Carlotta shows up and they sort of have a tug of war meant verbally and mentally over, uh, over Rowan. And it is at that point that Cortland says, Hey, she's kept your mother under lock and key for 30 years. She was the one who made her feel sick, um, who made her, uh, uh invalid. And then has now made herself appear to be the victim of this. Um, and Rowan is kind of having a difficulty. She hasn't been around either of these. She doesn't trust either of them. So she's not sure which one to sort of go with. Uh, but Carlotta gives her a rosary put around her neck to sort of protect her, him, her from him. Cortland kind of like, whatever. Okay, cool. But Cortland leaves uh, with his whole team and his, uh, his, his offspring kind of is like, hey, are you comfortable leaving? Why are we leaving her with Carlotta? And he's like, He's there. She'll, she'll be fine. He's, he, he won't let anything happen. He's there with her, uh, which I call BS. So at the end, but we'll get there uh, before he leaves. though, he does hand her a card um, to reach out for looking about her an inheritance and to just discuss more about talking to Lasher. Well, Rowan stays behind uh, a butterfly sort of leads her up to a room where uh, the pen is just sort of hanging out. Conveniently, the story. <laughs> um, she takes off the rosary and puts on the necklace that is the lineage of all the, the, the Mayfairs. Um, and then she takes a photo to Cyprian and be like, hey, look what I found. At that point, just conveniently, Cyprian was going through the libraries and getting more and more into the Mayfair uh, history. And he finds a photo that has some pretty alarming things said to it. And then the photo... Uh, has a photo of one of the Mayfair witches with the pendant that she just texted over. And Cyprian's like, I need to go because you're not where I said you're supposed to be. And uh, I got to figure out where the hell you at. She, he runs over to the Mayfair uh, manor. While she's trying on the, the pendant and while she's wearing it, Carlotta comes to the door and sees it and kind of just her heart breaks. Um, she's the rosary is taken off protection that she thought she was giving her is gone and now she has a direct connection to Lasher. And her heart breaks. And so at that point she sets forth in motion a pretty devious plan. Another convenient manner is that Rowan leaves her phone upstairs. I've never seen her we've never seen her once with it'd be it would be different if we had a pattern of her always being forgetful and leaving things, but that doesn't other than the fact that she just can't get a message from Cyprian. 
um, super instructs in a way, and she's not responding. She starts freaking out. Um, and he's he arrives at the gate of the manor, and while this is happening inside, Cor- uh, Carlotta and um, Rowan are having a dinner, almost like the everybody's seen Batman '89 that long table. The two of them are are opposite ends, and they're having a conversation. Um, the chef for the day comes in and says, "Hey, is everything to your liking?" She's like, "Yep, cool." All right, good. I'm going to take off for the day. And he leaves. He closes the door. Um, it's at that point that Carlotta starts sort of feeding Rowan a little bit more. But Rowan is asking. At this point, this is the first time that Rowan starts asking some actually good questions. And she's like, well, I'm a doctor. Can I see my mother's medical records? Uh, what was it she had? And Carlotta's like, nah, I'm not telling you that. I'm going off this way, going off the rails here. Rowan starts digging a little bit more. And at that point, Carlotta just starts flipping the fuck out. And she starts saying that, like, I lost your mother. Uh, I lost you. I'm trying to save your soul. Um, and it's at that point, she just starts setting things on fire. And Rowan's like, well, I got to get out of here. The, the, the chef uh, who left did lock the door behind him. So there's this big fire engulfing uh, and danger is, is, has, has, has come. It, uh, here's the thing about this scene. Portland left Rowan there because Lasher is present. He's doing a piss war job of keeping her safe. Uh, because the only reason that La- uh, Rowan actually gets out of this is because Cyprian shows up. So Rowan uh, tries to open the door. She starts screaming at the top of her lungs. And then Cyprian busts down the door, comes in. Uh, and then Carlotta, who has put a knife in her hand, stabs Cyprian as she's trying to stab and kill Rowan. Uh, and then Carlotta just turns around looking disheveled and confused about life and whatever. Um, and then Rowan and Cyprian leave and Lasher just whispers, well, she's already mine. Sure. <sighs> Look, this episode dragged for me. Uh, again, I was already aware that Lasher was the person that was responsible for killing Deidre. Um, I think we all knew that Carlotta was batshit crazy. <laughs> uh, I think for me at this point, I need to have a bigger connection to Rowan. And I think what I'm losing as we go along these next episodes, and I'm not going to stop watching these because I'm, I'm already, it's only eight episodes. I'm, ha- I'm at the halfway mark. But we need to get this, this train going. I need to either get more into who Lasher is and what he can do. I think this is the other problem. I don't know who Rowan is and I don't know who she is as a character. Um, and I, I feel sort of ignored there. Uh, I feel like there's a history, a rich history that they're just not telling us because they're trying to keep it all in present day for whatever reason. But I think the other thing is that Lasher is both everything and nothing at once. Like everybody's afraid of him. He can do whatever. He can literally take over a body have them kill somebody and then kill them and come out of it and be perfectly fine. And then when Cortland says, hey, he's got her, he can't protect her from a fire. I need to know what his limits are because it feels like he's both everything and nothing. And there's not a clear line as to which one I'm supposed to believe he is. Um, I think we spent, I think this is a 40 minute episode, and I don't feel like we are any different than what we were before the episode started. Like, everything's really sort of in the same place. Rowan's still with Cyprian. We all know that Carlotta's nuts. The only thing that has changed is that now the pendant is in Rowan's possession. That can be 20 minutes at the top of an episode as opposed to an entire 40-minute episode spent just in that. I think the last episode did a better job of at least, put, at least putting Lasher and Rowan face-to-face and them having a moment together. We have now spent this entire episode with Lasher pretty much not being around and definitely not any connection to Rowan. I don't know why we took a step back when we were starting to already head forward with their chemistry. All in all, I feel this is the the weakest episode so far of the season. Uh, I do hope that somewhere along the line... Look, I think the problem is that we're we're comparing this to the end of the Vampire series. While I did not review that, I watched it in some freaking immaculate series there's time taken with that and i think this series doesn't believe its audience is 
paying enough attention or willing to go the long road to sort of build those seeds of the past to help tell a better story or a richer story of the future. I think if you were building those up and you were saying, hey, this is how sometimes how the Mayfair witches reacted or were, we could get a little bit more insight into maybe that's sort of a little bit of the characteristics of who Rowan is. But right now, I have no idea who they were in the past. I have no idea who Rowan is currently. And I'm sitting here just watching people go through motions slowly. <laughs> um, and so I need something to pick up. My book readers, if you're out there, let me know if I'm missing something, but like, let's get to it. Uh, let's ramp up the energy a little bit as opposed to this, this slow, monotonous slog that we kind of had with this episode. What did you guys think about this episode uh, called Curiouser and Curiouser? <laughs> Go ahead and leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at Hollywood ADI. You can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. We also have a podcast with the same name that's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any other place podcasts. We're there. And like always, I got my ticket. You got yours. <laughs>